let's talk about surface finish in machining because machining is often the manufacturing process that determines the final geometry and dimensions of the part it is also the process that determines the parts surface structure the roughness of a machine surface depends on many factors that can be grouped as follows and the first one is geometric factors and then work material factors and third one is vibration and machine tool factors the discussion of surface roughness in this section examines these factors and their effects let's talk about geometric factors these are the machining parameters that determine the surface geometry of a machine part they include type of machining operation cutting tool geometry most importantly nose radius and third one is feet the surface geometry that would result from these factors is referred to as the ideal or theoretical surface roughness which is the finish that would be obtained in the absence of work material vibration and machine to factors type of operation refers to the machining process used to generate the surface for example peripheral milling facing milling and shaping all produce a flat surface however the surface geometry is different for each operation because of differences in tool shape and the way the tool interacts with the surface and there is a diagram so it is the effect of nose radius so this is zero nose radius and this is the new surface of this one and this is large nose radius and this is the effect of the new surface and this is the effect of feed so this is large feed so effect of large feed and this is small feed and this is the effect of small feed and this is effect of end cutting edge angle so it is large angle and it is zero angle so it is the effect because of large angle and it, it is the effect of because of zero angle tool geometry and feed combined to form the surface geometry the shape of the tool point is the important tool geometry factor with the same feed a larger nose radius causes the feed marks to be less pronounced thus leading to a better finish if two feeds are compared with the same nose radius the larger feed increases the separation between feed marks leading to an increase in the value of ideal surface roughness if feed rate is large enough and the nose radius is small enough so that the end cutting edge participates in creating the new surface then the end cutting edge angle will affect surface geometry in this case a higher end cutting edge angle will result in a higher surface roughness values in theory a zero end cutting edge angle would yield a perfectly smooth surface However, imperfections in the tool, work material, and machining process produce achieving such an ideal finish. The effect of nose radius and feed can be combined in an equation to predict the ideal average roughness for a surface produced by a single point tool. The equation applies to operations such as turning, shaping, and planing. So this is the equation. So it is R I equal F square by 32 N R. So here R I is theoretical arithmetic average surface roughness, and it is expressed in millimeter or inch. And F is the feed, and it is expressed in millimeter or inch. And N R is nose radius on the tool point, and it is expressed in millimeter or inch. The equation assumes that. the nose radius is not zero and that the feed and nose radius will be the principal factors that determine 
the geometry of the surface. The values for Ri will be in units of millimeter or inch, which can be converted in meter per inch. As the tool wires, the shape of the cutting point changes, which is reflected in the geometry of the work surface. For slight amounts of wire, the effect is not noticeable. However, when tool wire becomes significant, especially nose radius wire, surface roughness deteriorates compared with the ideal values. Let's talk about work material factors. Achieving the ideal surface finish is not possible in most machining operations because of factors related to the, to the work material and its interaction with the tool. Work material factors that affect finish include First one, build up edge effects as the build up edge typically forms and breaks away. Particles are deposited on the newly created work surface, causing it to have a rough sandpaper texture. Second, damage to the surface caused by the chip curling back into the work. And third one is tearing of the work surface during chip formation when machining ductile materials. Fourth one is crack in the surface caused by discontinuous chip formation when machining brittle materials. Fifth one is friction between the tool flank and the newly generated work surface. These work material factors are influenced by cutting speed and rack angle, such that an increase in cutting speed or rack angle generally improves surface finish. The work material factors usually cause the actual surface finish to be worse than the ideal. An empirical ratio can be developed to convert the ideal roughness value into an estimate of the actual surface roughness value. This ratio takes into account build up edge formation, tearing and other factors. The value of the ratio depends on cutting speed as well as work material. The procedure for predicting the actual surface roughness in a machining operation is to compute the ideal surface roughness value and then multiply this value by the ratio of actual to ideal roughness for the appropriate class of work material. This can be summarized as RA equal RAI capital RI, where RA is the estimated value of the actual roughness. RAI ratio of actual to ideal surface finish and RI ideal roughness value from equation. Let's talk about vibration and machine tool factors. These factors are related to the machine tool, tooling and setup in the operation. They include chair tar or vibration in the machine tool or cutting tool. Deflections in the fixturing often resulting in vibration and backlash in the fit mechanism. Particularly on older machine tools, if these machine tool factors can be minimized or eliminated, the surface roughness in machining will be determined primarily by geometric and work material factors described above. Chatter or vibration in the machining operation can result in pronounced waviness in the work surface. When chatter workers are distinctive noise workers that can be recognized by any experienced machinist. Possible steps to reduce or eliminate vibration include first one, adding stiffness and or damping to the setup. Two, operating at speeds that do not cause cyclical forces whose frequency approaches the natural frequency of the machine tool system. Third one is reducing pits and dips to reduce forces in cutting. Fourth, changing the cutter design to reduce forces. 
what phase geometry can sometimes play a role in charter. These cross sections tend to increase the likelihood of charter, requiring additional supports to alleviate the condition. And thank you for being with me.